it's Pamela. And I'm Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Today we're continuing our series on the top predictors of success for a business owner. Mm -hmm. We've discussed belief, mm -hmm. we've discussed vision and being a visionary, and today we're going to discuss leadership. Now, a lot of people think people are kind of like born with leadership qualities, mm. but I can tell you that's not true. Some people have the fortune of growing up around people who are strong, effective leaders, so they kind of naturally pick it up. Mm -hmm. But leadership is something that can most definitely be learned. Now, we're going to share with you some of the, what we think are some of the stronger traits of an effective leader. Mm -hmm. Pam, why don't you go first? First ask for advice. Don't be too proud to admit when you don't know something. Just ask for advice. Ask questions as well. So that they kind of go together, ask questions, ask for advice. You can also ask questions of your team that maybe you already know the answer to, but you want to elicit a response from them. Well, just like you're saying, don't pretend to have all the answers. Right. Don't yes. be the smartest person in the room. Yeah, you don't have to. I think some people conflate being a leader with, I have to provide all the answers. I have to do everything for my team. They're, you know, they're just my team and I need to provide everything for them, which is really not the case. Don't pretend that you have all the answers because you probably don't. And there's no shame in admitting that you don't and soliciting help when you need it. Yeah. Be human. Yeah. Because we know you are. We know you're not a god. Right. Yeah. Understand that you have weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Build a great team around those weaknesses. Surround yourself with people that are smarter than you in the areas where you're weak. Right. And have the humility to acknowledge those areas where you're weak. Because mm -hmm. we're not all super people. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> super I mean, men don't, and women. <laughs> don't be afraid that someone else is going to overshadow you. Because here's the thing. You're the leader and they chose to work for you. Right. So yep. you don't have to be concerned about those things. Don't be afraid to surround yourself with smart people that are smarter than you mm -hmm. in the areas that you're weak. Treat people well. Recognize that a company is a group of people. It's all built upon the relationships that you have with your team. So you want to value that team. You want to treat them well. Kind of what I was saying a minute ago about uh, don't pretend that you have all the things that the team needs. Treat them with respect. Your customers, your clients, your vendors, your employees, all of these people affect the success of your business. If you don't treat them well, how do you think they're going to repay your business? It's not going to be pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, make sure that you praise people and you know you find the best in everybody. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to point out the worst. Just find the best in everybody around you. And another thing, delegate. Mm -hmm. People grow as they receive more responsibility, not before. That's right. So if I can interject for a second, Tracy, I just have a personal experience with this where I've worked with managers in the past who have wanted a certain level of control <laughs> over the process and things that they could have delegated to me very easily and that I was more than capable of doing they wanted to do themselves. Either they just had this personal need to control everything or maybe they didn't trust me fully. Maybe it was something about what I did. I don't know, but I just know that in those circumstances, A, it was a waste of time. They were wasting their time on things they should never have been doing in the first place. I could easily have done. And it was also demoralizing to me as their, um, as their employee to think to myself, why, on earth would this person not trust me with this? Is it really that big of a deal if I write this article or whatever? It just sends this message that you don't think your employees are capable. Even if you don't mean to send that message, that's not the message you wanna be sending. So you have to be cognizant of the messages that you're sending your employees through your actions. Sorry, so didn't mean to interrupt, but. <laughs> basically, Pamela, you're telling us you worked for some people that weren't very good leaders. No, they, they weren't. I <laughs> worked for some great leaders. I really have. But I'm just like, you know, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of the times when it wasn't so great to yeah. illustrate our points. And Yeah, and unfortunately, that's what stuck out in your mind. It does. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the thing about it. If you build a good team, trust them. Yes. Motivate them. 
praise them, listen to their suggestions, take them seriously, and just you know, point out the positive. Look for the positive. Mm -hmm. Someone is kind of like not on your best side right at the moment. Mm. The best thing you can do as a great leader is to think of all their positive points. Another thing, lead by example. Say and do the things that you actually believe. Really easy, but you know, easier said than done. Most definitely easier said than done. Yeah. I think, and Tracy agrees, she's the one that brought this point up to me. The things that you say and do in life, whether they are in your business or in your personal life, they are really a symbol of who you are. They epitomize who you are as a person. So what you put out there in the world, especially now that we're all online these days, <laughs> and it's easy to start typing before our little sensors have, <laughs> have an opportunity to work, but really you have to keep in mind that the things that you say and do are a symbol of who you are, mm -hmm. for better or for worse. That's true. Mm -hmm. And now, the golden rule of effective leadership. Mm. Be the last to speak. If you're familiar with Simon Sinek, you've probably heard him say this. As soon as Pam and I heard it, we were like, oh, that's yep. it. There's, there's the it. golden rule. <laughs> yep. And he talked about this at the Spark Conference, and I would like to read you a little bit of what he said on that subject. Being the last to speak. The skill to hold your opinion to yourself until everyone else has spoken does two things. One. It gives everybody else the feeling they've been heard. Mm -hmm. It gives the, everybody else the ability to feel like they've contributed. Mm -hmm. And two, you get the benefit of hearing what everyone else thinks before you render your opinion. Mm -hmm. It's a skill. The skill really is to keep your opinion to yourself. If you agree with what someone's saying, don't nod yes. If you disagree with what they're saying, don't nod none. Wait, I was nodding yes, so should I have not nodded yes? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was nodding backwards I was also. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh wait, I'm not going to nod. <laughs> you were agreeing with what he said. Yes, yes that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Simply sit there. Take it all in. And the only thing you're allowed to do is to ask questions so that you can understand what they mean mm -hmm. and why they have the opinion they have. You must understand from where they are speaking, why they have the opinion they have, and not just what they are saying. And in the end, you'll get your turn. Mm -hmm. It sounds easy. It's not. Just practice being the last one to speak. Yeah. I think that's so great. It is. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's hard. It really is. You've got this strong burning opinion about something or you have a very strong version of how you want things done in your business it's hard to just keep your mouth shut <laughs> and i guarantee you are jumping on the <laughs> i guarantee yeah. you everyone of you's been in this situation mm -hmm. and everyone of you has done this you walk in a room you go here's our problem here's what i think i want to hear what everybody else thinks mm -hmm. backwards yeah because here's the thing, somebody might have a great idea, but they don't have the balls to contradict the boss. That's right. And you missed out on a great idea, a great opinion that might have solved the problem way quicker than anything you had come up with. Yeah, yeah. If you're just dictating right out the gate, then like Tracy said, maybe they don't want to contradict the boss. Maybe they're new there and they feel like they haven't earned that place in the company yet and you don't really know what's going on in their minds but give them the opportunity to give feedback first and exactly. then you can give your opinion <laughs> so how do you learn to be a great leader mm. well i tell you what you're not going to do it in a weekend you're not going to do it in a month mm -hmm. it takes a lifetime of honing a skill every interaction that you have with someone Examine it after the fact. Go, how did I handle that? Did I handle that the way an effective leader would handle that? Mm -hmm. Did we get the best result from that interaction? Right. Could I have done this better? And if so, how could I have handled this better? Did I speak too soon? Right. Did I give the person a chance to fully express themselves? Now, if you're not an effective leader, if you're a dictator, you know, 
recognize it. If you have a tendency to avoid conflict, not saying you should get into conflicts, but if a conflict arises, do you handle it head on or do you kind of like shy away from it and hope it fizzles out? An effective leader is going to know how to handle every situation. Mm -hmm. So if you'll notice, if you've watched this mini series on top predictors of success, you will notice a pattern here. We've talked about belief. We've talked about vision and how to be a visionary. Now we're talking about leadership. In all three of these videos, we have said that you'll have to practice. You'll have to put in the work and put in the time to become these things or to acquire these characteristics, but that they are definitely learnable. These are not something that you're born with. You don't, you know, get born and at five years old, you're running the world. <laughs> These are skills that you really can learn on your own, but you have to apply a specific discipline over time to acquire these. And that's the theme that's been going throughout this whole mini series on predictors of success. There are specific traits that we've mentioned that you do need and that good leaders have mm -hmm. and that visionaries have and that people who believe in themselves have but they are all acquirable, very acquirable by you, just by putting in the work over time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, three of the best books you'll ever read on becoming an effective leader, and please don't just read them once, <laughs> study them. Yes. But the first one is by the author of our golden rule of leadership, Simon Sinek, and it's called Leaders Eat Last. Mm -hmm. Guess you know what that one's all about. Yep. <laughs> the other is, and hopefully you're already familiar with John C. Maxwell. He has been a leader in the education of leadership for uh, decades, I mm. guess, you know? Okay. Um, but two of his books I highly recommend are The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and Developing the Leader Within You. Mm -hmm. These three books will set you very far down the road of being a great and effective leader. Mm -hmm. but you have to apply the information. You have to examine all your interactions with people and how well you handled it. Mm -hmm. You know, muck one up, you mucked one up, yeah. but learn from it. And I was telling Tracy just yesterday, I have personal experience with this. I've been in a situation where I was working with people who there were specific things going on with them where it wasn't working out with them for one reason or another, but really it all came down to my inexperience in leading. I didn't have the experience. I really didn't have the knowledge or the tools. And that experience kind of spooked me from, you know, hiring people in the future. But I've come to a point now where I'm like, okay, I know what I did wrong. I mean, whatever happened with them happened and it's over, but I know what I need to do differently to avoid those situations in the first place, maybe bring in better people or handle these situations better when they come up. So I speak from the heart when I say you can learn these skills and be a better leader. We all fall on our faces at certain times in our careers. I mean, I, I, you've told me stories of your businesses. I've told you some of mine. <laughs> we all have these experiences, but you know, read these books. Like Tracy said, don't just read them once. Read them, read them again, take notes, digest them, do the work, and you can become a great leader. So this is the conclusion of our series on the traits and characteristics and predictors of a successful business person. Mm -hmm. We hope you've taken it to heart. We hope you want to apply it and learn and grow and become better mm -hmm. at being a successful business owner. Mm -hmm. And we honestly hope we've really helped you. Yeah. So what we want to know from you now is, do you think you're an effective leader? And if so, what are your strongest leadership traits? Mm -hmm. So if you're watching on the video, put a comment below. And if you're listening to the podcast, head on over to HowBusinessReallyWorks.com and chat us up there. There are plenty of places where you can get in touch with us on the website. Absolutely. And don't forget to like this episode. Please share it on social media with your friends, with your business acquaintances, if this has helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us a review on iTunes. We would be really appreciative. It will help us become found on iTunes more easily, which will in turn help us help you build your business. So thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time.